Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. So in this video, I'm going to give you a quick tour of Nina. If you didn't know, Nina 111 has gone beta, which is another step towards its official release, and that's super cool. I've been using the nightly builds of Nina for well over a year now, and the program has been working fabulously. Now, this isn't a tutorial video. This video is intended for those either thinking about switching to Nina, or maybe you're using another acquisition program, or if you're still using Nina version 110, say, and you're curious about what 111 beta is all about, this video is for you. If you want me to get into more details about specific parts of Nina, let me know in the comments below. And if you're liking this video or other videos of mine, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. It uh, does help the channel grow. Okay, so let's get into it. Let's have a look at Nina 111 beta. Okay, so I have Nina fired up and this is basically what you're going to probably see when you open Nina for the first time. So you go to options over here in the left hand menu and uh, we're on general, the general tab within the options menu. And you're going to want to create a new profile. There's probably going to be a default profile showing already and you could just modify that because it's a, a blank slate uh, for the most part anyways. So you could do that. But if you wanted to create a new profile or additional profiles, you can just click the plus button and you can see here that it creates it. So once you've uh, created your profile or if you're using the default profile, you can rename it. You can call it what you like. I'll just call it my profile for an example. Um, you don't have to save. You don't have to click save in Nina. Uh, as soon as you change uh, any of the values, the parameters are automatically saved. You can select your language and your font and you can select the update source. You can uh, update the uh, program based on uh, official releases or betas or nightlies. You can select the uh, color scheme that you want to use. There's a drop down of some color schemes here that you can choose from. You can have alternate color schemes or you can customize these color schemes and you can uh, plug in your latitude and longitude and uh, you can use a custom horizon as well if you want. I have a video that uh, uh, shows you how to create a custom horizon and set it up in Nina if you're interested in that, check it out. Um, what I'm gonna do though is I'm going to use, just for the sake of demonstration here, showing you behind the scenes of Nina, um, I'm going to show you with one of the profiles that I have created, okay? Um, so that you can see how things are actually uh, set up uh, inside of it. So I have a, a custom color screen, uh, a color uh, scheme that I have enabled. Um, this I like using at night. Uh, it's a nice, uh, nice color scheme that I created for nighttime use. And um, this is using the uh, Explore Scientific 127 carbon fiber uh, triplet and the uh, QHY 260M uh, CMOS camera. So what I've done is I've named it that and I've selected my language. Uh, I'm in Canada, so we actually use the uh, UK English and uh, the font type I just left at default. I'm going with nightly updates right now. I could uh, switch that to beta since uh, Nina is now in beta mode. Um, Sky Atlas image folder. This is where I downloaded the Sky Atlas image repository and, and saved it. And I directed uh, uh, Nina to that folder. Um, the Sky Survey cache folder is just default. You can leave that. Um, and again, down here where you can select the color schemes and enter your uh, latitude and, and longitude and so forth in your custom horizon if you uh, have one. Under equipment, you're going to set up your camera, pixel size and bit depth. Telescope, you're going to set up for the uh, type of telescope that you're using. So in my case here, as I said, it was the Explore Scientific 127. And I have the uh, reducer flattener on it, so it brings it down to 666 millimeters uh, and a focal ratio of f5.3. And um, I entered a settle time after slew, so after the uh, mount slews to a specific uh, area of sky, I have it set to just uh, give it a five second breather settle time. Um, I am using a filter wheel. You may not be using a filter wheel, but the uh, filter wheel details will show here if you are for the various uh, filters that you have in uh, different slots. Um, so luminance, uh, red, green, blue, H alpha, etc. Autofocus, uh, this is where you can set up if you're using motorized focus. Uh, you can set up for motorized uh, focus uh, um, uh, settings, uh, how you want it to perform. So in my case here, I am using a Pegasus Astro Focus Cube. 
uh, for my motorized focuser and I have it set to a step size of 100. Um, uh, the default auto exposure time is 10 seconds, but I don't actually uh, use that when I'm um, imaging and doing autofocus. I have it set to, for luminance in red, green, and blue, I have it set to three seconds, and I think H alpha is around five seconds. I have it uh, set for, as example, our narrowband filters. That seems to work uh, not too bad. Actually, I have it right here. I can see it right here. So these are the uh, filters that I have installed with the uh, focused offsets and uh, the exposure times that I'm using. So this is where you can set all of this up, uh, including your backlash in or out. I'm using the overshoot method, which works really well. And I have it uh, pull in 300, uh, well, it, it pulls back in 350 steps once it, uh, to, in order to get to proper focus, uh, whatever number that is, whatever step uh, value that is that it's arrived at. Okay, so um, that is the autofocus. You can set up your dome settings here as well. And uh, this is your imaging windows for uh, configuring the, the imaging. So the type of uh, files that you want to save, FITS, EXIF, or TIFF, um, the, where you want to save them to, and the file pattern name. So, you know, however you want to uh, have your files named, uh, you can choose to... Uh, uh, so you can select that and uh, um, have a specific file pattern uh, naming uh, scheme if you like. Meridian flip settings are available here for you to set up. Imaging options, you, if you're using a one-shot color camera, you can debare the image or you can do an unlinked stretch as example. Um, you can choose what focus you want to use, uh, uh, Nina or Hocus Focus. Hocus Focus is a, a plug-in that's available for Nina. And uh, that's for the star annotator. And uh, here's the autofocus you can select from Nina or autofocus. I used uh, Nina. I'm going to be switching over to Hocus Focus and giving it a try. I haven't done that yet, though. Uh, sequence. This is where the uh, sequence files are going to be saved and the templates folder and so forth. You can leave that at default if you like, or you can change it. Plate solving, um, this is where you're going to set up for plate solving. And I have, I use uh, ASTAP as my main plate solver and uh, blind solver, I use uh, astrometry.net. All right, so once you've got those basic settings input, uh, you can go to equipment, uh, the equipment uh, tab on the left menu here and under camera, and you can select uh, the camera that you're using. So in this case here, I'm using the 268M from QHY and I can click to connect that camera. Now, once you have all of your uh, settings uh, input for the equipment that you're using, it gives you an indication here that the camera connected, and uh, this warning is just, uh, I need to update the driver, so no big deal on that, but it's nice that it gives me that warning just to let me know that I should update it. So you can connect manually each device that you, each piece of hardware that you're using, or once you have it all set up, you can just do a quick connect over here by pressing this button here. You can quick connect or disconnect all of the equipment at once. You can set to cool the camera here. You can set your temperature and your cool down times. You can set up your warm up time and so forth, and you can just click to uh, start cooling or click to warm it uh, manually if you like. You can also set it to, uh, you can set up a, an automation sequence that uh, allows you to, uh, allows Nina to control that. So it'll cool the camera for you and warm it up at the end of your uh, imaging sequence. Uh, cooler power is demonstrated here in this graph and sensor temperature as well. Filter wheel, as I said, if you're using a filter wheel, um, this is where you'll find it. If you're not using a filter wheel, if you're just using one shot color, then uh, this won't be applicable to you. But I'm using a filter wheel, so uh, I could connect it. It shows that the filter wheel is connecting down here. And it says that it's uh, successfully connected to the filter wheel. So, and here's the filters that I have set up the luminance, the red, green, blue, and uh, that shows you the various uh, information with regards to your filter wheel. Focuser, I'm using the Pegasus Astro Focus uh, Controller for my setup. Uh, yours will be in here as well under the ASCOM drivers or native, uh, depending on what uh, motorized focuser you're using. Rotator, if you're using a rotator, this is where you'd set it up. Uh, telescope mount, this is this is where you're going to connect your mount and your mount. Uh, you could be using EQ mod, say, for an EQ6, if that's what you're using. I'm using uh, Green Swamp server, so I would connect using the ASCOM 
Green Swamp Sky Telescope uh, driver. And then I could just click connect and it would uh, connect my uh, mount to Nina. And I've got the uh, success uh, message over here in the corner. So that's pretty straightforward. Uh, guider, again, depending what guider you're using, I'm using PHD2, probably most people are using PHD2, but you can select uh, different guiders here, and that'll tie into your PHD, PHD2 and allow you to do auto guiding. If you're using a switch, you can set it up here. Uh, flat panel can be set up, weather station, dome control. Uh, you can choose what uh, dome control you're using. And uh, safety monitor, again, you can choose a safety monitor if you're using one. Next, uh, that completes the uh, equipment uh, menu. If we go to the Sky Atlas menu, this is where we can actually uh, input uh, to look for, for an object. So. Uh, you can search for objects in different ways within the Sky Atlas. It's very handy, but let's just put in M31 and we'll search for it. Pops up here, shows me M31, uh, some details on it. Uh, it's RA and DEC, so forth. This is my custom horizon, so it shows me the rise and the transit and the set time for M31 currently. And my custom horizon is input, so rooftop, uh, trees, and uh, more uh, rooftop and uh, uh, so forth. So custom horizon is very nice to uh, have enabled. It gives you a good indicator of uh, when the object is visible. But the Sky Atlas allows you to uh, search in different manners too. So you can select uh, you can select a search by object type, uh, constellation, coordinates, surface brightness, all different things. So if I go into constellation as example, and I chose uh, Cepheus or Cepheus, depending on how you want to pronounce it. Um, I can click search and it's going to call up all of the objects in, Ces uh, in Cepheus. If I was interested in a deep sky object within um, the constellation of Cepheus. So the Sky Atlas is really powerful, nice little feature, and you can add it to a target sequence or you can set it, send it to the framing assistant or you can slew to the target. And if you want to just take a quick uh, image just to see how it looks, uh, you could do that as well in the. Uh, Sky Atlas. If I um, go back though, if I uh, just as example, if I use um, just uh, go back here, if I use M31 as my example, search for that. If I sent that over to the framing assistant, it's going to call it up here and it's going to show me my field of view with my sensor and telescope and I can, uh, I'm using the hips to fits uh, sky survey in this and uh, it shows, you can choose different uh, sky surveys. I like the hips to fits one though myself, it's fast and it works well. Um, it'll show you uh, the target then that is loaded in the framing assistant. You can actually search in the framing assistant too. So if I wanted to say uh, search for NGC 1333, I click on it there to select it and then load the image and it loads it here for me. So I can see NGC 1333 uh, right there in the field of view. That's how it would frame up. So that's pretty uh, handy to, uh, to have this framing assistant uh, at your disposal so you can actually see how things, uh, how things frame up. And uh, it gives you some of your camera specs here. Um, you can create mosaics as well very easily. So if I wanted to, I could create a mosaic. I'll just zoom out here so you can see it. So there I've created a four panel mosaic. And I can control rotation as well. If I'm using a rotator, I can custom uh, set the uh, rotation value however I want it to, however I want to frame the uh, deep sky object. So that's a very handy feature in uh, Nina. Now, the other thing you can do too is you can actually reposition. Uh, so let's say, um, actually, let's call up, because it's a great example, let's call up M81. Because most times people want to image both galaxies, right? Um, at the same time. It's, I mean, people do image them individually, but most of the shots that you see out there are of both galaxies. So let's say that I don't know the coordinates uh, that's uh, lying between the two galaxies to, uh, to position the telescope and the, the camera on. But I can very easily do that in the um, framing assistant. 
uh, by clicking, left clicking and holding, and I can drag this uh, field of view around now. So I can reposition it so that I am now going to image both galaxies. And all I have to do after I reposition it is click recenter, and Nina will reset the coordinates so that uh, when I slew to this object and center on it, this is where this is how it's going to look in my uh, field of view. So that's a really simple way to be able to um, frame up uh, specific deep sky objects or uh, regions of space that you're looking to uh, uh, that you're looking to image uh, that you're interested in imaging. So the frame assistant is really powerful. You can slew and center on an object. I'm not going to click that right now because this is during the daytime and I don't have things set to to work properly in that capacity, and they uh, wouldn't be able to wouldn't be able to plate solve anyways during the day. But uh, you could click to slew and center. Uh, you can just slew to it if you want. You can add it to a target sequence. You can send it to the simple sequencer, which I recommend if you're first starting out with Nina. And again, I have a video on using the simple sequencer and migrating to the advanced sequencer, which might be of interest. If you're uh, looking to take uh, advantage, full advantage of Nina, you're gonna have to use the advanced sequencer. But the simple sequencer is a great place to start. It allows you to build a sequence and uh, get imaging fast. So you can send it to the simple sequencer or you can send it to the advanced sequencer. Um, and I have some various templates made up here for H-alpha RGB imaging, uh, just LRGB imaging, uh, show imaging, color and show as example. But if I sent it over to the simple sequencer, it's gonna send over uh, M81 to the simple sequencer. And this is where I can set up my imaging run. So I can set this to cool the camera, uh, unpark the mount, do a meridian flip. At the end of my targeting run, uh, at the end of the night when uh, it's uh, dawn, I can have it set to uh, warm the camera and park the mount as example. So I can set up, um, it gives me the coordinates of the object that I'm on and uh, shows me the rise and set times. Uh, target, I can I can enable uh, slew to the target, center to the target, and start the auto guiding. Auto focus, you can set various uh, parameters for the focusing, however you want to handle it. Um, I'm using uh, multiple filters, so I'm going to uh, enable uh, to auto focus on filter change. But if you're using one shot color camera, you don't need to enable that. You could simply have it. Uh, autofocus every 30 minutes just to keep things nice and tight or you can select other means to have it uh, refocus uh, throughout the night as it's imaging. Down here uh, you can enable disable uh, various uh, imaging uh, runs so you can set up to take uh, uh, let's say uh, uh, an hour I'll do uh, 12 exposures of 300 seconds so there's an hour uh, light frame that I'm going to take um, again, if you're using one shot color, you, you don't have to change this, but I'm using a filter wheel, so I'll just change it to luminance. Have my binning set. Uh, I'm going to use one by one, and I'm going to have a dither. Um, I could have a dither every frame, or I could have a dither every five frames, say, whatever your choice, whatever you like. Shows my gain and offset that I'm using as well. And I can simply add another uh, line of imaging. So here I've got another hour of light frame, and I can switch it to. Uh, the red filter to image with for an hour so and I can keep building sequences like that now this could be handy for one shot color uh, as well in here uh, you could set it to uh, take an hour of uh, 300 five minutes uh, exposures on say something like m42 and then you can have it take um, maybe you know a half hour or something of uh, 10 second or 30 second exposures on m42 so you don't blow out the core you can collect uh, both of that and uh, both of those data sets uh, by setting it up here. You can also, um, you can add another object if you wanted to. You could go back to the Sky Atlas and search for one, or you could use the uh, framing assistant. So if I did uh, M31 as example and loaded that in the framing assistant, there it is there. I can add that to the simple sequencer like I did M81. 
and it shows up here. So now I have M31 and M81. So it's going to image M81 first, and then it's going to image M uh, M31. And M31 I'm going to set up just like I did M81 in terms of the imaging run, uh, the details for it, depending if I'm using a one-shot color or a monochrome with multiple filters. Now, once you have this set up, you can uh, save this sequence. Uh, you, can, you can save it, or you can um, send it over to the advanced sequencer, or you can just run it. Um, if you're going to be using the simple sequencer over and over, you could maybe save these, uh, save these uh, setups and uh, by uh, clicking to save the sequence. And uh, then you could call it up again to use it uh, if you wanted to in a, a future imaging night. Uh, but you would just click uh, to start the the uh, the run the sequence and uh, basically Nina is going to carry out the uh, the instructions that you've set up here in the simple sequencer. So it's going to slew to M81 and it's going to center on it and it's going to uh, switch to the filters that it needs to and take the images uh, take the data that uh, I've asked it to. If we wanted to, we could send this over to the advanced sequencer and take advantage of more capability, more power uh, within Nina. And if I click that, it's going to give me a warning that uh, I'm going to be moving from the simple sequencer to the advanced, and that's okay. And this is the advanced sequencer. And this is where you can utilize, there's a whole bunch of instructions, options that are available to you uh, for imaging that you can custom create your um, advanced sequence imaging run with. Now I'm not going to get into specific details. Like I said, uh, this is just a quick overview or trying to be a quick overview of what Nina is like, but this is the advanced sequencer and I can set up for global triggers. I can set up my, my target is brought over from the simple sequencer as example, and it shows the coordinates of it. Um, I can set up triggers, loop conditions, instructions, uh, if I want to add in feature sophistication to the imaging run. Um, here it's got uh, the instructions to switch to the luminance filter, slew and center on the target, and start the auto-guiding. It'll auto-focus every uh, 30 minutes just to keep uh, things nice and tight. Stars looking sharp. This is the uh, exposures that it's going to take, and it's going to do the luminance as I had set up in the simple sequencer in the red. Uh, but you can add um, to this, so if I wanted to, let's say I want to add another, I can just simply uh, drag the smart exposure from the camera op, uh, menu and drop it here. And I can uh, select to, say, uh, image with the green filter. So very powerful there. Loop conditions, you can set it to do various things. I like to set it to um, have my imaging run end at the uh, end at nautical dawn. So I set it for nautical dawn. And you can set other loop conditions. Um, you can choose from those here in the, uh, the pop-up menu, the sub-menu that pops up. And triggers, of course, you can set for different uh, options as well. Um, triggers, one of the triggers I like to set up is to, uh, email on failure, uh, any, any failures that occur, it's going to email me. Um, I also like to, I don't think it was up here in the global triggers in the global triggers. I like to set, um, to restore the guiding. Uh, so if I have clouds come through in that, it'll keep trying to restore the guiding for me. Uh, once the clouds have moved off. And then, so it's going to do an exposure run. It's going to take these exposures and it'll do that until nautical dawn, in which case it'll stop guiding then once it's completed, once it's reached that time and uh, it'll stop guiding. And, uh, well, actually I should demonstrate, this is actually, I, I hold over two objects. So what I'm going to do here is I could set this to a specific time. So let's say I wanted to image this until one in the morning, um, then what's going to happen is it's going to stop, Nina's going to stop imaging M81 at one in the morning, and it's going to switch over to M31. It's going to stop the guiding, and then it'll uh, slew and center on M31, and it will carry out the imaging instructions that I've set up for it until those are complete. Now, in this second uh, deep sky object, I could set that to uh, loop until uh, nautical dawn. 
So if I do that, it'll loop until dawn, then it'll just keep imaging M31 until dawn, in which case it'll stop guiding, it'll then warm the camera and park the scope. So um, I will try to get into the advanced sequencer in another video uh, for you, uh, just to show you some of the power of it, but uh, that's a very quick overview of the advanced sequencer and the options that are available to you in it. Nina also has a flat wizard that makes taking flats super simple. I have a video about taking flats using it. Really simple to do, and you can use a, you can use a, a panel if you're using a flats panel, um, or you can use, um, I do sky flats, so I have it set to do sky flats, and it's very simple. One shot color is really easy to do uh, flats for, and uh, if you're using multiple filters like I am, you can have it do uh, take multiple uh, 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 flats for the various filters that you have installed. Sequencer we've covered, that's the advanced sequencer. This is your imaging window. So this is how I have it set up and you can drag these windows around. You can move them to different areas, whatever you want to do. Um, I'm just going to drop it here again, but you can set up your imaging window to customize it how you like. Um, this is where your image is going to show once you take it. Uh, this is for autofocusing. When to uh, so see the autofocusing progressing, uh, plate solving, you can plate solve and so forth. All of these options here in these menus show up down below, uh, right down. So if I click on 3D view as example, um, if uh, if I turn that off and on, there now it's gone. So it's not on the bottom menu here. If I click it to enable it, then it's available to me here. And I can break these out. I can put this uh, someplace else if I wanted to. I could leave it open like this, or I could actually uh, reposition it down here. So I would see where the telescope is uh, located, uh, where it's currently pointing as example, and I could see the image that I'm taking at the same time. So that is a uh, possibility for arranging the imaging uh, window in Nina. Very handy to have, and you can set up to have uh, various information about the camera and the focuser and the rotator, uh, where things are at there. It'll give you some telescope information as well, so things like uh, the tracking and the sidereal time and the meridian uh, flip when it's going to occur and the current right ascension and declination, etc. All of that's in there. You can get weather details if you have your weather uh, station connected. And over here, uh, it's going to give you some information. Statistics I have pulled out. So I'm using statistics just to see the histogram and get some information about the uh, current image as they come in. Uh, imaging tab, uh, I can set for different exposure times and I could uh, manually select uh, different filters that I wanted to use uh, for uh, taking a, a short exposure. If I wanted to just check uh, an object out, just see how it frames up, say I could choose a filter and do, uh, you know, do a 30 second exposure just to check it out. I can also use the uh, manual focus target uh, options to select a star that's available to me. And this will allow me to uh, uh, select the star and slew to it automatically. And it just shows you what stars are available currently in the sky. Okay, so this is the imaging window. This is where all the action is going to happen. This is where you're going to see your images come in and the information on your imaging run and an image history. It'll show you some images here of the various frames, the previous frames that were taken. Options we've already shown you at the very beginning for setting things up. So lastly, uh, we're going to look at plugins. Nina has uh, some awesome plugins available. They've opened it up to third-party development so that uh, more functionality can be created for Nina. And if you go to plugins available, it shows you the various plugins that are available. These are the ones with the check mark that I have installed myself, but you can choose to install them. And it's very simple to install. You just uh, select it and click install, and then you'll need to reboot Nina uh, in order for it to become active. Once they're installed, they'll show under the install tab here. All right, so that was just a little tour of Nina to give you an idea of what it looks like and how it functions. Uh, leave a comment below. If you're using Nina currently, do you like it? Um, or are you not using Nina and you're thinking about switching to it? Let me know below in the comments. Uh, really interested to hear what you guys have to say. Okay, we will see you again real soon in another video. Take care, everyone, and clear skies.